Okay, now we're going to start with basic embroidery. So what I did to select embroidery is I'm going to touch this little hoop up here and it brings me all these options. Um, when it first comes up, you can see that basic embroidery is selected and it's larger than the others. And what's really nice here is if you're looking for a different technique in embroidery, you can select that technique um, and it, when you go into stitch out, I'm going to say yes, okay, I was doing something earlier, now I want to start over. All of the designs that are showing now are only for standard embroidery. So you can, you can select items this way, or I'm going to go back to that screen, the start screen. And what I'm, uh, I could do if I just wanted to do applique, these are all the different kinds of applique that are available uh, on, the, on the machine, uh, and so on. There's freestanding embroidery, cutwork embroidery, yarn embellished embroidery, and so on. But we're going to start with basic embroidery today, which is this option. And instead of selecting that, I'm actually going to select the Start New option. And what that does is it brings up a, all of the designs that are installed on the machine. So I don't want uh, to stitch anything really big. So I'm going to look in here for a design that I think might be a little bit smaller. And I think one of these is smaller. Well, it's 200 by 200. What's nice here is you can kind of see the size right here, how many stitches there are, how many color changes there are. So that's really useful. Also, this is the file name. So I'm going to keep looking until I find one that's uh, yeah, it's only got 1,077 stitches in it. Maybe we'll use that one. Um, or actually, how about the sunflower? This one has 7,000 stitches and three colors. That's a little more than I want to do. So I'm going to keep looking. Oh, and those are interesting. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't remember seeing those. Actually, let me come over here. And I know there's some designs in here. I want one color change. So I'm going to select this one right here. And you see it's come into the screen, but not quite in the center. So I'm going to touch just the center of that wheel right there, and it lands the design in the center for me. OK. Now, on the embroidery screen, there's a lot here, too. So I'm just going to kind of show you the tabs down the side. First of all, we have. This is that knowledge center where there can be a project. So if you were using a project, the instructions were, would be here. The next tab down with a zigzag on it is stitches. This was bringing up all those stitches that we had in sewing. Uh, you can actually bring any stitch from sewing into embroidery and combine them. And I'll show you some ways that we can use that a little bit later. The next tab is all of your fonts. These, the top ones are the sewing fonts from, the fonts from sewing, and the bottom ones are the embroidery fonts. And we're going to play with those in a little, a little later, too. Below that, these are the built-in designs. And uh, you can also make the screen a little wider, like I did, by touching it again. And you can scroll through either by swiping or by selecting the different uh, letters down below. And they are all of different categories. These are fantasy designs. These are holiday designs, and so on. So there are a lot of designs already built in. But then, of course, you also have access to um, USB drives. I don't have one plugged in right now, so we're not seeing that. But if I had a USB device plugged in, you would be able to select files from there. What you're seeing here uh, are all the files from um, my Sonet, from my cloud storage. Um, and you can see some of these are actually projects from um, Viking, like this one. Um, and there are a bunch of designs that I've found somewhere else. I've just loaded them to the cloud, and they're here waiting for me to play with later. So it's really kind of exciting and very convenient just to have all of that available. All right, and then the last thing on the screen here is your colors. And you can thread colors. Uh, and you can edit these if you want or leave them the same. I'm going to leave them the same. And I'm going to go back to the flower tab, which is the built-in designs, and have that disappear. 
or at least shrink down a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna change this to the larger hoop that I've decided to use today. So to do that, I can just touch the 120 by 120, and these are millimeters, by the way, or centimeters, I don't know, I get confused. And we're gonna use the 360 by 200 hoop, so I'm gonna select that. Um, also over here is our toolbox, and you can see I've got one design here. This is where we can mirror image designs. If you wanted to wrote, uh, flip that upside down, I'm going to put it back to its original orientation. You can flip it side to side. Oh, I think I touched the duplicate instead. You can duplicate, and it kind of lands them right on top of each other. I'm going to delete that second one. Here's where we can um, mirror image side to side. I'm going to put it back the way it was. Copy, I already showed you. And if I want to remove this from the screen, um, I would touch the trash can. It doesn't remove it from your memory, it just removes it from the screen. Okay, and there's some other functions that we can do in more advanced embroidery. Okay, so now I've selected my design and I'm ready to hoop my fabric. So when you get the hoop, uh, the Brilliance 80 comes with the 260 by, or 360 by 200 hoop, which is what I'm holding, a 260 by 200 hoop and a 120 by 120. We're gonna use the large hoop 360 by 200. There are many other hoops available um, for this machine, but these are the three that it comes with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've loosened this little clamp here. I'm going to loosen that up and take the inside of the hoop out. And you always want, almost always want to use stabilizer with your embroidery. There are a few exceptions, but we're not going to talk about that today. Um, so I put my stabilizer down. And on top of the stabilizer, I'm going to put the fabric that I'm going to stitch on. And you can see how it kind of moves around a little bit. So I've got to make sure it's layered nicely. And I center that over the hoop. I want to talk a little bit about the hoops before I put the center in. Uh, the number or the size of the hoop is always printed at the bottom or embossed, I guess, at the bottom. That's important because our hoops are not um, completely symmet symmetrical. The uh, center point is highlighted here with these little tabs in the center. That's the horizontal center and the vertical center is indicated here. It, you might notice that there's a little extra space up here at the top. That is the machine needs a little bit of extra space to move around in so not all of the hoop is usable space and this does indicate center. If you put this in upside down, you will have it, and you try to center something in the hoop using those marks, you'll be off because it will be up too high. So it's really important to just get into the habit right away of uh, putting the size at the bottom. And then you fit the hoop inside the outer hoop. And you don't want to push and pull, and uh, it doesn't have to be really taut. Um, the fabric. So I just put it in here uh, and try to keep it nice and smooth. Um, what can happen if you pull on it too much here is you can distort your fabric and the bad thing that will happen is if you do distort it what, and stretch it out, when you take your embroidery out of the hoop it's going to pucker and bring itself back in. So you really don't want to do that. It can affect the quality of your stitching. So the next thing I'm going to do is close this clamp, and I should be able to do it pretty easily. It's still a little tight, so I'm going to loosen it. I've got to think about which way is looser. <laughs> I'm going to loosen it a little bit more so that I can close that easily with one finger. And now I can use the um, knob here to make it tighter. We don't want it popping out, so just check and make sure the frame's really in there. I like to use the palms of my hands a little bit because that gives me a little more strength sometimes than my fingers. Okay, and once that's in, we're ready to put it on the machine. All right, so I've got my fabric hooped. Um, I've got my dot design selected, and I'm just going to go ahead and press go. On the way into embroidery, I love this screen. Um, it gives you uh, access to all the, it kind of reminds you of all the things that you need to think of before you start embroidering. One thing is that 
For best results, Viking recommends that you use a single needle plate, one with a smaller hole. Um, it comes with that plate. I have the bigger one on here right now and I'm not going to switch to the smaller one and it's smart enough to know that I've got that one. Um, but for best results, you really do want to switch to that smaller a hole in the stitch plate. It shows you what hoop you've selected. Then there are some options here for your colors. If you want, you can have it uh, color sort, color block sort, so that all of the blocks of the same color are together. Um, you can have it merge color blocks, so it will stitch all, all of the colors that are the same together without stopping. And then you can also choose monochrome. I do use monochrome quite a bit. I use the other two with caution because if you have designs that are layered um, to create a, a certain kind of artistic effect, if you change the order of the colors, they might not stitch out the same way. So um, I use those with a little bit of caution. I also do use based around the design and based around the hoop quite a bit. I'm not going to do that right now. But in more advanced embroidery where you uh, might not want to hoop the item, like if it was a leather jacket, for example, you probably wouldn't want to baste around the hoop either, but uh, there are times when you will use the basting. Okay, and then on the other side of the screen, you can see uh, that it uh, defaults to the sensor Q foot, and that's what's recommended for embroidery, and that's the foot that I have on. Or you can also use the R foot with the regular sewing ankle. Uh, and I don't think I've ever done that, <laughs> but it's possible. We're going to leave the deluxe stitch system on. That is what uh, portions out the thread beautifully for you and makes your tension work well. Um, and then I'm also going to leave in the automatic thread cutter and automatic jump stitch trim. But you can turn off the thread, uh, the jump stitch trim, and you can turn off both options if you prefer. The time that I use that the most is when I'm quilting in the hoop, I actually turn them both off. One thing you should know, I've had customers ask about this, um, the machine will cut your thread uh, between colors, but it only cuts the top thread. The engineers with Viking determined they think that you get a better stitch if they don't cut the bobbin thread. So when you're finished, you will have a lot of bobbin threads on the back that have not been cut. Um, and you can choose what to do with those. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to make any changes here. I'm just going to press continue. And that takes me then into embroidery stitch out mode. And it's going to tell me, okay, you said you were going to use this hoop. Now you need to put it on. So what you want to do to put the hoop on the machine is slide it straight in under the foot. I do that first. Uh, if you go up or down or angle it, it can be hard to get in. So you just want to make sure that the hoop is straight. And then on the left side here is where the attachment um, for the hoop that slides into the embroidery arm. This is what we call the arm. And this has robotics in it that are very similar to the robotics that are used in long arm quilting. Um, so what you want to do to put it in, you're going to take this plastic piece, that's the connector, and slide it in between the plastic and metal portion uh, of the arm. So I'm just going to slide it straight in and push until it clicks. Um, you don't, this little button right here is what we'll use to take the, the hoop off the machine. And what, at that time, we'll push that button down and pull toward us. You don't, want, you don't ever want to push this down as you're putting the hoop on, because what can happen is you can get, end up pushing the hoop in too far, and you could even end up stitching on the hoop itself, which is something you really don't want to do. So it's important to make sure you don't use that button when you put it on. Okay. So that's putting the hoop on. I'm going to touch OK now that I have it on. And I'm ready to do my first color. I've got three color changes on this uh, design. So I'm going to go ahead and press now the Start Stop button. I'm going to lightly hold on to this tail end of the thread so that when it cuts it, I can pull that out and I don't have a tail sitting there.
Okay, that was my first color. It stitched a few stitches for me. I'm not going to actually re-thread, but what you would do now, if you want to, is re-thread the machine with another color. Um, I wanted you to be able to see it. I don't want to take the time to do that. But um, what I wanted to show you down here is what happens to the screen. So down here you can see uh, one of the spools has gone over here. Um, and we stitched color one had 968 stitches in it. If I need to go back and do anything with color one again, I can actually touch that color and it will start over on color one. But color one did just fine, so I'm going to skip to color three. Uh, sometimes you'll get in the hoop projects where they'll tell you to skip a color, and you can do that here, and that's how you do it. If for some reason you need to step through a design and go a little bit forward, you can do that. So down here where the little needle is, you can go use the plus sign to go forwards and the minus sign to go backward. Um, and the shortcut to get the beginning of a color is just to touch the whole color. Um, another thing you can do with color, let's say you got about 50% through uh, a color and something strange happened, you know, stuff happens with this sometimes. And what I would recommend, if you're having trouble and you need to turn the machine off for some reason, you can actually check here and uh, see what number of stitch you were on. And then when you come back in and want to restart, you can touch the little uh, needle here and it brings up a keypad where you can type in exactly the color, uh, the stitch that you want to start with. Okay. So we're fine with starting with color number two. The other thing I think that's nice here is the spools. As you watch this, that spool, is as we start stitching, it's going to start to run out. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, have it start again. And I can talk a little bit more about the screen. Nope. I'm going to stop it because it didn't cut my thread for some reason, probably because I was holding on too tight. <laughs> I'm going to trim it and then let it start again. So right now you can see it's going through color number one. It has a total of 968 stitches, and we're on stitch number 140-something, 150, 160, okay? On the right side, or the left side of the screen here, these little plus and minus signs here um, actually affect the tension for you, the balance of the stitches. So if you're having bobbin thread showing on top or top thread going too far under and looping, this is one way you can adjust that. I'm going to go ahead and stop so we won't watch the whole design stitch out. I just want to show you what some of the options are that are available. Okay, so I'm going to go and select another design and we're going to play around with design positioning here in a minute. Uh, so to go back to color edit, I'm in stitch out mode right now. And the reason that I know that is because this green arrow is over here in the right hand corner. So I'm going to touch that arrow to go back. And it's going to warn me that I, I, because I haven't finished the design, it's going to ask me if I want, really want to do this or not. And I do this time. So I'm just going to touch OK to re return to embroidery edit. Now, it always wants you to take the hoop off before it does that. So I'm going to reach over, push the button down to release the hoop, and pull the hoop straight towards me to get it off the machine. And turn it around, and sure enough, it doesn't cut that bobbin thread. OK. I'm going to touch OK, and we're back to Embroidery Edit. I'm going to actually just um, delete this design, show you how to do that. So you have to actually select the design. It has to have a box around it in order for you to be able to do anything with it. And I'm going to touch the trash can, and I'm going to come in and find a different design. Um, I don't know. Let's see. I'm not much into the kitchen stuff right now. Let's take these little hearts. I'm going to bring that in, just a tiny little design. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to move one of them over. And because of the way that looks, I'm going to um, mirror image it there so that they kind of, um, now you can even move the whole hoop around. Most of the time, I don't want to do that. There we go. 
So I can use my finger to move the designs around. Those of you who might have had uh, a designer diamond or ruby or a topaz will find that this is really a lot of fun to use your finger. Um, once you get to the point where you want to make some fine adjustments though, you can use the hand wheel or the wheel here, I like to think of it that way, um, to rotate designs. Um, so this, me this is where the positioning is. To rotate a design in machine in embroidery edit, you touch this little icon right here. It's got two arrows kind of going in a circle and it changes the wheel so that you can rotate them uh, nine by 90 degrees if you want or just smaller increments uh, too if you, wanted, if you want to do that. The other thing you can do on this screen is uh, increase or decrease the size of the embroidery design slightly. You can go up to about 20% bigger and down to about 20% smaller. Um, anything more than that, so I'm making this one a little bit bigger and I'll show you this one I'm going to take a little bit smaller and that's as far as it'll go uh, in terms of resizing. To do any more than that, you really need embroidery software, which we can also help you with. Um, this machine actually, and all of our Husqvarna Viking and FOF embroidery machines comes with some free software uh, that will let you create your own fonts and it will let you see pictures of the embroidery instead of a file name but that would, that's something I will show you separately. But just know that that's freely available on the website, Husqvarna Viking website. Okay, so I'm gonna, choose, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch these two designs out and arrange them around the stuff that I stitched out earlier. Once again, I'm not gonna make any changes on the way in, so I'll just say continue. And I'm gonna slide my hoop in. Now, I think uh, you know these are both similar designs, so what I'm going to do so that it doesn't stop in the middle, um, all of those options that were offered to me on the way in, several of them are available here as well. And I'm going to choose this little icon right here has to do with your colors, and it's got color block, sort, merge, and monochrome. I'm going to touch monochrome, and so now my little designs have gone gray on the screen, and it's going to treat it as one color so it won't stop and cut the thread between. Um, okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you once we got here uh, is, those are your basting options. I'm going to move that out of my way for right now. This is called design positioning. Uh, I'm going to touch this little flower with the four arrows on it. And what you can do here is by selecting um, icon number one down here, and I really recommend you just do it uh, in the steps one, two, three, four. So sometimes step one is all you'll need to do. What I'm going to do is find the center of this entire design. So I'm going to touch one, and then I touch the toolbox. These are um, upper left corner, upper right corner, middle, uh, lower left, and lower right corners. I'm going to touch that center. Um, and then I'm going to touch number two, and now I can actually move the design around on the screen so that I can place the center of it exactly where I want it, and I want it to line up with the center of this other design that I started. Now I can do that on the screen until I want to get a little bit more fine, and then I can use the hand wheel, and sometimes I'll even bring my needle down so I can see how close I am. You have to take it back up. So I'm going to check. I can get as close as I need to. Um, and I want to show you, right now that's probably good enough for this design, but I want to show you how far you can go with this. So on this screen here, I'm going to actually go back to number one, and I'm going to move, let's say I wanted to move, line that point of the heart, that bottom point of the heart up on a particular place in the hoop. Um, so what I can do in number one is come down here and select this magnifying glass and I'm going to touch the first option here which lets you focus all the way down to a single stitch. Look at that. I can choose to line this up not just on the stitch but on the entry point or exit point of a particular stitch. And this is a really powerful 
powerful way to do uh, design positioning. I'm going to zoom back out now to the hoop and I'm going to minimize that so I don't see it anymore. And now I can go to step two and I can put that single point, that stitch point, anywhere I want in that hoop. So this is a really powerful uh, design positioning program. Okay, so I'm going to go back to step one again, select the center again, back to two, and I'm going to show you another feature of design positioning. I'm going to move it back up roughly where I had it before. Okay, so it's just about in the center. Now let's say I want to tilt this a little bit. I'm going to select three, um, and I've got another little blue cursor there. I am going to move that to the heart up there on the upper right corner. I'm going to zoom in, and I want to get just right there to the center of that heart and come down and position it a little more finely. Zoom back out, and now I'm going to select number four. When I do that, the machine turns the center point that I lined up originally into a fulcrum, and I can move this design around the center in any direction I want to go. So I can not only line it up anywhere, I can angle it and tilt it anywhere within that. And there are times when I go back and forth between these different uh, positioning tools to get it, things to line up exactly where I want them. I'm going to stop, I'm going to select that. And so now you can see it's going to stitch right where I've placed it. Okay, once again, I'm not going to finish the stitching on this because there are a few more things that I would like to show you. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to cut my thread. And if you use the scissors here, it will cut the uh, bobbin thread for you. Okay, the next thing I want to show you, what's called something that's called design shaping. This is a feature that you have on the, on the machine. And it's uh, that little icon with the stars, what I touch to enter design shaping. And I love it, it tells you where you are up here. The first tab on design shaping is your shape menu. And all of these shapes are available for you to choose. I'm going to first of all choose a straight line. And if I go back and minimize that a little bit again, I've got my straight line right there. And I would like to rotate that. And I'm going to even minimize it more because I want to make this bigger. So I'm going to change to the resizing and make it, whoops. I'm making it smaller. I want to make it bigger. <laughs> you can either use the arrows or you can pinch and drag. I'm not very good at that on this screen. So I'm just going to use my arrows to make it larger. Come on. Got to select the right thing there. So it's gradually making that box, that, that line, longer. Okay. Now, what I can do next is I can come in and either select a design from embroidery or I can select a stitch in from sewing. And one of the most popular things that people do with this feature is let's say you wanted a line of buttonholes that were perfectly spaced. Um, if I select this buttonhole, I can add as many of these as I want and I can have them spaced out evenly spaced like this. If I wanted to, I could left justify them. I'm not sure. That might be kind of some decorative effect. You can have them centered and uh, so on. So there's all those options. I'm going to go back to evenly spaced. You also have other choices. You can have them centered on the line like they are right now. You can place them above the line, below the line. I'm going to leave them centered. And um, you can rotate them. So this is not the line, but the actual stitches. So let's say I want to rotate them 90 degrees. Now instead of the buttonholes facing going horizontal, they're going vertical. Um, and you can keep going with that. Of course, they're going to look the same. Um, oops, touched the wrong thing. There's your magnifying glass if you need it. And then there's one more option here, which you can change, again, the way that they show, uh, the way that they are placed on the line, and it will 
That will be a little more obvious later. So now all I have to do to stitch out those buttonholes is go into Embroidery Edit. If I want to, I can try to make them a little bit more spaced out, make that a little bit bigger. And then I can press Go, go to Stitch Out. Now they're right down the middle. So this is a case where I'm going to move them. And we probably won't stitch these out, but I just want to show you another feature in here. I'm going to go back to Design Positioning. I'm going to select number one. I'm going to select the center again. And I'm going to select number two. And I'm just going to move these buttonholes so that they are not going to stitch over whatever else I've done there. And I'd be ready to stitch them out. If, like I do now, I have kind of this other stitching in the middle here, and I want to check and make sure they're not going to stitch over something else, or if I don't want them to stitch over a collar or something like that, this is a really great little feature right here, this four-way um, icon with the arrows. If you touch it the first time, it's going to go to the upper left corner of the design. The second time, it's going to go up to the upper right corner, and it's going to show you where that's going to be. The third time, it's going to take you down to the lower right corner, so you can see where that's going to stitch. And the fourth time, it's going to go to the lower left. And the last time you touch it, it's going to take you back to where it will start stitching. I have found that to be a really useful feature uh, many times. OK, so I'm going to not stitch these out. I'm going to take the hoop out, go back to edit, embroidery edit, so I can show you a few more things. Now, a lot of us love to do applique in the hoop. Um, and you can actually create your own applique designs on the machine without having software. So this is pretty awesome. To get to design applique, you're going to touch the little flower that has a pair of scissors on top of it. So I'm going to touch that. Again, I'm in design applique. The shape menu looks very similar, but what this is going to do instead, and we've got all the alphabet and some letters and some special char couple of special characters in there. I am going to actually choose, I think, the square this time. And what you can do, or I, you know what? I'm going to choose the letter D for me. OK. Now I can actually create a satin stitch, a narrow satin stitch, a wider satin stitch. This is kind of a, uh, oh, I touched the candle wicking. That's a, a candle, small candle wicking, large candle wicking, and then in the center, got kind of a disorganized, not real neat satin stitch. So something that's a little more um, jagged. That's the word I guess I'm looking for. So I'm going to say OK to that. I like that, the way that looks. Um, and uh, I've got the 260 by 200 hoop selected here. So I'm going to go back to select my 360 by 200. And I'm going to press Go. Now, if you have not done applique in the hoop, oh, I don't want monochrome. That's really kind of important. Uh, let me put the hoop on. Remember earlier I had changed it to monochrome. It's going to stay that way as long as I have the machine off on until I turn it off. So I want to go and turn that off. And I'm going to bring my color block list up again. And do you see how this icon right here, the monochrome icon, is uh, turquoise? I'm going to touch that, and now it's not turquoise. Um, and it's not, that means it's not activated. So the first color that's going to stitch here is going to be the outline for your applique. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that. This is a really large D, so you can be really bold here if you want to be. OK, so that's called a placement stitch. It's going to come to the center and, and show you where the opening's going to be for the center of the letter. Oh, 
And we're only going to stitch over a little bit of what I did before. Okay, so that again is called the placement stitch. Now I'm actually going to use a piece of denim. And the next thing we're going to do, I just want to make sure it will all fit in there. I think it will. Um, the placement, what we want to do is cover up the placement stitch with the fabric that we're going to use for the applique. Okay, so get that nice and smooth. If you want to, you can spray um, a adhe temporary adhesive spray on the back of this before you put it on. I'm not going to do that. Um, and now I'm going to stitch what's called the tack down stitch. So it's going to go around and outline the letter D. And so because I didn't um, do anything to keep that uh, flat, you know, I have to watch my fabric carefully and make sure it's nice and smooth. And with the tack down stitch, it's going to go over it a couple of more times to make it a little bit more uh, sturdy. Now it's going to go do the center. So you can make these letters <coughs> bigger or smaller. And numbers and any of the shapes, the star, the circle, all of that, really got quite a bit of flexibility. And my customers who have these machines really like this feature and use it quite a bit. You know, with a circle, you could actually embroider an initial in the center. You could turn it into a patch, do an embroidery design on the, on, inside the circle if you wanted to. So um, there's just many, many possibilities for this uh, feature here. Okay, now for this size uh, applique, I'm actually going to take it out of the hoop and I'm going to use my scissors to cut that thread. I, you can either do that or you can cut the bobbin thread after you take it off, but I tend to do that quite a bit. And now what I'm going to do is trim Usually I use my applique scissors for this, but because it's the denim, I'm going to use a regular pair of scissors here. And you just trim around the design. You want to probably get a little bit closer than I'm getting right now. Um, and I'm not going to try to go in there and get the middle. I'll just kind of give you an idea of how this works. And you want to trim nice and close. It's nice that you don't have to, I love this because you don't have to um, cut your shape out of your applique. The machine kind of does that for you. So uh, then you would go put it back on the machine. Okay, make sure it clicks in. And now it's going to do that satin stitch around the edge. And you'll see when I said that I needed to trim it closer, you'll see that. Not a whole lot, and we're not going to watch this whole thing either, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how the applique works. So I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to cut my thread, and there we go. So it's going to do a nice wide, um, I chose the wide satin stitch, so it's going to do a nice wide satin stitch, and it's going to be just a little bit jagged on the edges like that. So now that I've finished my embroidery, um, one of the important things to do is, I need to tell you a little bit about needles. Um, you want to make sure that you're changing your needle about every eight hours of sewing is what Viking recommends. And whenever I do that, I also go into the bobbin case and clean. So I'm going to show you that right now. So what we have to do is take the cover off the bobbin case and take your screwdriver. It works pretty well. And what I do is just set that up in one of the corners and kind of twist it until the, until the stitch plate comes off. That's how you take it off. And then inside it comes apart a little bit more. So you can pull the, this little piece comes off and it's got a tab that will go right back in there. I'm going to take the thread out. Um, and then this is the bobbin case. And I don't know if you can see in there, but there's some dust and it got a little bit dirty, so what I'm going to do is take a, uh, I call it a cotton swab, dip, dip it in rubbing alcohol, 
and then just swipe that around the bobbin case anywhere you can reach. And so at a first pass, that's what I got so far. <laughs> um, and then after you kind of get that cleaned out, um, and I've used up to four or five of these things depending on uh, how much cotton or how uh, fluffy the fabric is or how much it sheds. So just put that cotton swab pretty much in any place that you can get it. Um, the nice thing about the rubbing alcohol is that it kind of helps attract the dust to it and it dries really quickly. So it's not going to be hard on your machine that way. Okay, so I think I've got just about everything I can get out of there for right now. Um, if it had been dirtier, I would have spent a little bit more time on that. And now I'm ready to go on. Uh, I'm going to put my pieces back together. Uh, one thing you really don't ever want to do is use canned air inside the machine. If you blow it into the machine, it can get things up into places where we can't even get. So that could really cause some damage to your machine. Um, the one place where you can use canned air is here in the bobbin case. If you start to notice that there's fuzz and uh, buildup in this area, then it would be perfectly fine to take this out of your machine and spray it with some canned air to clear all of that out because that can affect your tension. Um, so I'm going to put the bobbin case back in and it goes with this opening, goes straight in facing the feed dogs there. And then I just use my finger to kind of settle it in and you'll know when it feels like, there we go, when it clicks in and it, it does that, you know you've got it in the right spot. Next is this gray piece. I'm going to slide that in and on top of the bobbin case. Now before I do anything else, one of the things that gets uh, tied up sometimes with thread is the cutter. And this right here, this little piece right here is the piece that comes across and cuts your thread for you. You can take your screwdriver and put it down into the side there and actually move the, that piece over. Maybe, there we go, to the, to the right. Uh, the actual blade is right here, so it can be replaced if needed, if it gets nicked or something. But oftentimes, pieces of thread will get stuck in there. So I'll take my tweezers or my cotton swab and clean that out. And then put the blade back down, move this piece back over to the left. And uh, sometimes the thread gets hooked around this part too, and it can lift up out of there and go right back in very easily. Okay, so the next thing, once you've got it clean, is to put the stitch plate back on. It's got a tab here in the back, and there's a hole right there that that uh, tab fits into. You need to make sure it gets in there. You don't want to press down on this if it's not in the right place, because you can bend these little tabs uh, out of place, and um, eventually they break once you've bent them once. So it's just a good idea to make sure it's in the right place. Then you can just push it down and uh, it's ready to go. Then you drop your bobbin in um, and make sure it's in place and you're ready to start sewing again. Okay, so some additional features in embroidery that this machine comes with. Um, it comes with, it's wireless capable. So when you get your machine home and need to set that up, there's an icon right up here in the upper left-hand corner. And when you touch that, you'll be able to select from whatever network you use in your home. And, um, and then you'll be able to access your MySoNet account. So this machine also comes with a MySoNet account um, on your on the cloud where you can store designs and um, that's what this little cloud is. I've got it connected with our uh, MySonet cloud folder and it's showing that um, my files are all synchronized and it shows me how much space we've used. Um, another feature of, because it's wireless, one of the wonderful things about this machine is that when there is an update for the machine, it comes automatically to your machine and you can just select to load it. 
Um, this little green icon down here at the bottom, I just love. When you touch that, you get free stuff sometimes. <laughs> um, so often they'll send you, um, here's a, a notification of an update that needed to be done. Um, here's some, uh, an idea on how to do some programming of stitches. Um, this is a little uh, talking about the MySonet library, and I am going to show you that a little bit uh, later, but um, there is a, a whole library available to you now um, through MySonet. Uh, you also get tips and hints, like this is how a, a little project on how to reuse ties to make a nice detailed uh, neckline. I think that's really a smart idea. Um, and then sometimes you even get free embroidery designs. So this particular uh, project includes uh, a couple of different ways to use these designs. And then to download the design, I just touch that and it will save it right here on the machine for me for when I want to use it. So this is, I just love this feature on this machine. It keeps you kind of up to date with what's going on. Okay, so to, I mentioned the library, and I'm going to show you where the files come for that. Um, so if I want to load a file from the library, I have to have already searched for it on my computer, and I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, to access it after I've saved it, I go ahead and go into um, embroidery mode, and on this, fold, this tab right here with the little red heart, I touch that tab, and there's a new um, folder. Once you've subscribed to that, you do have to pay a, a monthly subscription fee for that. Uh, when you touch the folder and hold it, uh, the designs that you have selected as your favorites on the library will show up right here. And all you have to do is load them. And that's a cute little rosebud design there. Uh, I'm not going to stitch it out right now, but you certainly could. Okay, so let me show you where that came from. Okay, so I've got my laptop out and I'm gonna go to MySonet Cloud. So all I have to do is type mysonet.com and I've been there a few times, so <laughs> it just comes back up automatically. So here is where you set up your account if you don't have one. Um, and you can register your machine here you can, uh, this is where you can also subscribe to the library under Manage My Subscriptions. I'm going to go back home, um, back to the home page, uh, or um, to the MySonet menu. And this is, that was my account. Now I'm going to click on the cloud. And this is where you can see um, the files that you have stored in the cloud. And once they're here, um, I can upload and download files and so on, but this is a list of all of the folders and files that are also showing up on the machine. It's the same list. So if I want to look at those library designs again that I just showed you a minute ago, here they are. Um, I can download them or do whatever I want to do with those. Or let's say I bought a design from, I think this one is from Sweet Pea. And it's a knitting tote uh, design. So I can take that out of storage or I can add things here. Uh, but this is all the designs that I wanted to have on, uh, available to me on my machine. Um, right here, this image stitch is another interesting one. Um, this is uh, associated with an app that I'm going to show you in a minute. So that file folder is there too. All right, so that's the cloud storage. Um, and you can also download the sync tool to your laptop. And when you put things in that folder, it will, uh, you don't even have to go online uh, on the web. You can just load them into that folder in File Explorer, and it will uh, sync them up with your uh, machine. There's a help center here. There's also a project creator, and I know we have a couple of uh, different customers who work together with other customers to make designs or they run Etsy shops together, that kind of thing. 
And this is a way that you can uh, document a project if you want to share one with each other. So uh, if you like to do that kind of thing, uh, that's available to you too. Um, and then uh, the library is what I got kind of excited about. And this is the uh, one that's a subscription. You pay a monthly fee. It's kind of like Netflix. And there are, the last time I checked, there were over 5,000 designs um, available in the library, just right there for your monthly fee. So you can search, you can scroll through and see what they're highlighting. There's more than 100. Uh, the new Epic 2 has some ribbon embroidery, uh, so they're highlighting that. We also have a new 200, or sorry, 260 by 260 square hoop for quilters. That's a 10 inch square embroidery field. Um, so it's showing designs available for that. And more than 5,000 embroidery designs are now in the cloud, or in the library. You can search by uh, words, or if you're looking for a particular technique, for example, if you wanted to see some cross stitch designs, um, you can choose that or uh, cut work. I love cut work. Let's look at some cut work. So I'm just going to search. And the way you use this with the brilliance is I'm going to come down here and click on this check mark and that's going to search uh, for cut work designs and there are 88 of them. So what a cut work design does is uh, it embroiders and then you have needles or scissors to cut out part of it. So all of these designs are cut work designs, which are really cool. So what I would do to be able to access this on the Brilliance 80 is just click on this little heart right here, and that puts it in my library folder. And so when I go back over to the Brilliance, that file will show up in that folder. Uh, let me show you a couple of other things you can do. So if you want to search by size, uh, if you want to use a particular size hoop or have a size in mind, you can search by sizes. And then you can also search by animals, different categories like bugs and birds and butterflies. Viking has lovely um, butterfly designs. I'm going to click out of that children's and go back to the butterflies. And we'll search for those. And you can even... Uh, if you don't want too many color changes or if you want a maximum stitch count, you can filter by that too. Uh, and I've got 149 butterfly designs here. Um, and there's all different kinds. So we've got applique, sparkling, butterfly. Not sure what that includes. We can actually click in there and get a little more information. So I'm going to click on it and it shows how many color changes, and there's some metallic thread in there, which is why they're calling it a sparkly butterfly. So there's some good information, tells you what size it is, and you get some access to all kinds of um, beautiful designs. Okay, so there's that part of it. Um, then in addition to my Sonet Cloud, you think that's a lot, also, with this machine, you, because it's wireless, you can use, there are three apps available for the Viking, for the Brilliance. Um, one of them is the Joy of Sewing Advisor, which is uh, very similar to the one that I showed you on the machine. So um, you can look at the stabilizer guide, for example, and see what kinds of stabilizers do what kinds, of, you know, what they do. Um, or you can look at the different types of, like, free motion quilting, how that works and what you need. So if you're not sure about the, how to do that, here's a project that tells you how to do it. And if you're out looking for the materials, it has the list of materials right here. So it's really handy. Um, the, that's the joy of sewing advisor. Um, the quick sock guide and the sewing instructions are also on here. Um, in addition to that, there is my sew monitor. So, <laughs> and it will let you, uh, it will, as you're stitching, it will uh, let you know, it'll send you a text when you need to change color thread or if your thread breaks or if your bobbin runs out or gets low. So um, that's an awesome thing. 
And then uh, there is also a design placement portion of that app, which is really simple to use. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is the Quick Design app. So this is an app where you can take a um, picture of, oh, I don't know, a child's drawing or a coloring book. I really like to use coloring books with this. There are three different types of art that you can create. And you take a picture of it with your phone, and it turns it into stitches. And then um, right by touching that um, icon right there, you can save it to your cloud storage and go right over to your machine and stitch it out. So this is the flower and words. So I'm going to type flower words. Whoops. <laughs> OK, it's just going to get worse from here, I think. Let's try OR. There we go. And save. And I now have a design uh, that I can go look for. It's been saved to my Sonet. Um, and we can go stitch it out on the embroidery machine. Pretty cool, huh? OK, those are the apps that are available and the MySonet library and the connectivity with the Sonet cloud. And I know that Viking is continuing to invest in this, so we expect to see more options available anytime. All right, thank you and happy embroidering. <laughs>